someone's going to be online saying, well, Harry, I cut carbs out of my diet and suddenly the goldfish I lost when I was three years old came back to life and swam out of the toilet. So, you know, we're going to do something a little bit different because I see so many nonsense myths and misconceptions floating around the industry. And to be honest, many of them are promoted by influencers you may well follow. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to utilize a tool I've never used on the channel, being ChatGPT. And we're going to ask ChatGPT what the most common fitness myths are. And I'm going to debunk all of them so you can at least hopefully learn something from this video because you probably believe some of them. Before we do so, you know I've got a set. Firstly, obviously, as always, TFNL clothing is linked down below in the description and maybe even the comment section. But also, if at any point throughout this entire video, you actually just learned something from the video, I would very much appreciate it if you did like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel because it makes me feel loved. And sometimes I need to feel loved. Top 10 most common fitness myths. Go on, you ready for this? We go one by one. Number one, spot reduction works. So this essentially refers to spot reducing fat. And the common idea associated with that is that in training an area, you will directly lose fat in that area. So it almost implies that the training you choose to adopt will determine where your fat is lost. So for example, you might say, training my abs and doing crunches to lose my belly fat. That doesn't work. Someone's gonna say, oh, this one study said that it might give me more than that. I need more evidence, more data. We have years and years of proof that this doesn't work. One study that says it might do something somewhere isn't enough. Fat loss and fat gain, or essentially where you gain and lose fat, is actually largely genetic. Training certain areas will not make you lose fat in that area. If you want to actually lose fat in a pretty consistent and sustainable manner, Eat less, move more, maybe lift some weights as well. The fat will come off eventually. And everyone's gonna have a stubborn area which is harder for them to lose fat. That's normal. And that area is probably gonna remain stubborn until you get really quite lean. Carbs make you fat. I'm gonna get some really nasty comments because I did a video where I spoke about maybe Daisy Keach or Abby Sharp because one of them promoted something about not eating carbs. It's probably not Abby, it's probably Daisy. Which means because I've mentioned her name, she's probably be in the title in the thumbnail now, which is quite funny. And someone came for me saying, oh, Harry is wrong. Harry's a horrible person because he doesn't think carbs are the enemy and that we need to shun him because he's a bad man. Um, all I said was you don't technically need carbs to, to survive in like literal senses. They are not a essential macronutrient like protein, fats, they are, but carbs and alcohol aren't, but I would never cut them out. And I said carbs is what I use as my primary energy source because quite frankly, I train a lot. It's going to help my performance. It's going to help with just my existence in general. So I just said you don't need to cut carbs out because they're not going to make you fat. What's going to make you fat is eating too much and not moving enough. And then someone basically went mad about it saying I was the enemy. Someone's going to be online saying, well, oh, Harry, I cut carbs out of my diet and suddenly the goldfish I lost when I was three years old came back to life and swam out of the toilet. You're being a silly sausage. Cutting carbs isn't magic. Carbs are just quite an easy macronutrient source to reduce when you are in a deficit. So that's why people lean towards it. But again, I would never personally cut them out because you just don't need to and it's not going to do you any favors if you do. Lifting weights makes you bulky. But I actually think this is less of a common myth these days because I think a lot of people understand that it doesn't. A lot of women used to present to me, especially when I was early on in the industry, oh, if I lift weights, I'll get too big. Honestly, I tell you now, if lifting weights made you too big, we'd all be absolutely jacked and massive. It's not that easy. Building muscle is not that easy. And when people say, oh, no, I lifted weights, I was building muscle too fast. Were you really? Were you really? But lifting weights really only has positives, not just regarding quality of life, life, health, all sorts. Lifting weights is not the enemy and lifting weights will not make you too big and bulky. Lifting weights may potentially make you happier. Shocking, I know. You need to work out every day. No, you don't because you can't recover. If you're working out adequately and training with sufficient intensity, especially when looking at the realm of like strength and hypertrophy, if you work out every day, you are not recovering properly. And if you are recovering properly, you're probably not training hard enough. And you're not training hard enough you need to address some things. I have rarely ever met anyone who can recover training properly when considering strength and hypertrophy doing six days a week, let alone seven. So if you start telling me, oh, Harry, I work out seven days a week, I've missed a day for 327 years, you need to behave yourself because your training probably needs to be adjusted. Quickly link down below, you know I'm gonna say it. You've got the link to work with myself on a one-to-one -one online coaching basis where I can help you achieve your goals, whatever they may be and wherever you may be in the world. You've also got the link to the TFNL clothing, you've got the link to the TFNL workout guides, and you've even got the link 
straight to the team, no, tr team training, which for less than a dollar a day, you can follow a pretty spicy workout plan either at home or at the gym, which I've created for you and can even talk to me in the message board if you want to. But again, as always, all of those things are linked down below. You should only do cardio for weight loss. Absolutely not. Do I do cardio? No, I do not because I eat so much food, I just don't want to eat more of it. When looking at health, digestion, cardio is not a bad thing. Honestly, yes, lifting weights is going to have a cardiovascular element to it because your heart rate is going to increase, but doing designated cardio, even in the form of like incline walking or going for nice active brisk walks where you're getting more steps in, is going to do you wonders when considering digestion after meals, but also considering, like I said, general health and just heart health. So although I'm I'm a hypocrite, don't neglect your cardio because it's probably going to come back to bite you one day if you do. Sweating means you're burning fat. It's actually quite common in a lot of home workouts. They'll label things, I think maybe either Grow With Joe, maybe Sydney, where I can't quite remember off the top of my head, so don't quote me and start coming through in the comment section. I can't remember. Well, they will heavily title things in the manner of like, Big Sweat Workout or Super Sweat 9000 because it attracts a lot of the audience that assume that sweating is a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm saying that if you're sweating, it doesn't necessarily mean you're burning fat, it just means you're perspirating, you're sweating. If you're hotter, you're gonna sweat more. If you're colder, you're probably not gonna sweat as much. It doesn't actually mean fat loss. It doesn't really link to intensity or difficulty. Some people may sweat more than others. Sometimes I even sweat just thinking about moving to this fridge. It is one of your body's ways of cooling down. Doesn't necessarily mean you're working really hard. Doesn't necessarily mean you're burning loads of fat. You can't build muscle on a vegan diet. And someone's gonna come for me saying, ah, oh, yes, Harry, you eat meat. That must mean you're very pro meat. Uh, to be honest, this myth is a myth. You can build muscle on a vegan diet. I, I know of many bloody impressive bodybuilders and athletes in general who are vegan because quite frankly they eat enough food and they get enough protein sure there's the argument of getting complete proteins is a bit harder when following a plant-based diet you can still build plenty of muscle following a vegan diet at the end of the day you are choosing to adopt this diet or this lifestyle or approach to eating however you want to describe it due to likely ethical reasons, maybe um, looking at the environment, maybe looking at treatment to animals, whatever it may be, and I fully respect it. Honestly, I say go for it. If it's important to you, I respect it, and if someone says to you, you can't build muscle on a vegan diet, you look at them and you say, Harry told me to call you a silly sausage, and then you throw their goldfish in the toilet. But yes, you can. Just make sure you eat enough protein, make sure you work hard in the gym, and make sure you probably eat enough calories, and you're probably gonna be okay. You need to drink protein shakes. No, you do not. Protein, essentially protein shakes get heavily demonized because, oh, they're fake protein, they're this. No, don't worry about any of that. I say to people, whole food's always gonna be better, in my opinion, but protein shakes can be really handy and convenient if you're struggling to reach your protein requirements. So I have a lot of protein. I eat a lot of protein because I weigh quite a lot. I'm trying to build muscle. So it's a bit harder for me to get that through food. So I do have a protein shake every day just to help top it up. Do you need them? No, I'd rather not consume them because they always make me feel a bit blech but they are just a simple, convenient source of quick, easy protein. I recommend them if you need them, but I wouldn't say anything is actually needed. This kind of goes into supplements in general. You don't need supplements. Supplements are there to supplement. They shouldn't be there to replace. So you'll see people like Liver King, for example, who will preach, oh, you've got to have these supplements, otherwise you're going to die a small person. No, he's just promoting that because he makes a lot of money from a supplement business. Let's be honest. Women should avoid heavy weights. This kind of goes back to the women lifting, make some bulky sort of thing. Heavy is subjective. Strength is relative. What I say there is, if you want to build muscle, you need to get stronger. To get stronger, you're gonna to have to progressively overload. To progressively overload, you're gonna to have to do more reps and lift more weight eventually. And quite frankly, if you're doing that and training too, if not close to failure, eating enough, you're probably gonna build some good muscle, which is probably why you're lifting weights in the first place, to build some muscle and to potentially even look even better. Heavy weights aren't gonna harm you. Heavy weights aren't gonna kill you. What's gonna harm you is doing the same thing every day, not pushing yourself, not progressing, and feeling pretty bad about yourself because you haven't made any changes in the last year. You can out exercise a bad diet. While exercise is important, nutrition plays a significant role in achieving fitness goals. Healthy diet is crucial for overall well-being and performance. Yeah, no, I, I'd align with that in the sense that, for example, let's look at the context of weight loss. It's much easier to eat less than it is to move more. So if I were to say eat a thousand calories less, that's relatively achievable in the sense of a thousand calories might be for some people just a meal. Where if I say to burn an extra thousand calories a day, you're probably going to have to run for like an hour and a half, maybe even longer. And that's maybe not so achievable. Eating a meal less, although quite difficult, takes minutes, let's say. Burning a thousand calories may take hours, but in an ideal world, you would do both. Like, like I said, when looking at weight loss and fat loss, you would move more and eat less. Training is important, eating is also important. Those are some quick fire myths and misconceptions I've thrown out there, and hopefully, you know, I've learned something. And if you didn't learn something, I failed you, and you should dislike the video and leave me a very nasty comment, even though some of you probably already have. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating the waffle about nonsense in the industry and thank you for tolerating the video.